All right. <clears throat> we are in Luke 15. I want to start with just a, a simple part of verse 11. Luke 15, verse 11, and just first nine words. And he said, a certain man had two sons. All right, so he was a certain man. This, this, isn't, this isn't Jesus telling a parable. Once upon a time, there was a, you know, <clears throat> that's not what's going on here. A certain man, and what was it about him that made him a certain man? He had sons. He had sons. So, Deb, would you get me a tissue when you get a chance? So, his certainty about this man wasn't um, identifiers that we would pick up upon. Um, really, until you know the son, you don't really know the father because the, the father is unseen. And last time I remember him showing himself, he was talking about Jesus. <laughs> Heavens were open and he spoke, you know, this is my beloved son or this is my son, hear ye him. <clears throat> and so... So there is an understanding about this certain man that we call the father. That the way to get to know him is, um, well, let me just, let me give you an example. My real father left when I was pretty young, real young. Just up and disappeared and never heard from him again. <clears throat> and... When I was in my 40s, um, I guess we were in Costa Rica ministering at the time. Both Deb and I were there, and Nisi called us and said, well, some lady called us and said that your dad is in the hospital and may be dying. 43. <laughs> you know. So anyway, we, we walked through the whole thing and ended up, going down to the hospital down on the, on the Gulf. And, you know, as I thought about it, I thought, what am I going to say? I mean, you know, we can't throw the ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> can't throw the football. I mean, we can't talk about our favorite team or what you did, you know. I mean, not, not in the sense of a son. You can't. Total strangers. And um, I think that while that may sound like a sad story to some, I think that that's kind of all of our situation with the father because we try to come up with ways of being fathered or of relating back to him as father. But you can't do that properly if you don't know the son because it's the son the son that makes you a son. Nothing else. Nothing. You say, well, being born again. No, we're, talking, we're not talking about being born again or saved from hell. We're talking about you cannot relate to the father as a saved from hell person. A certain man had sons. And this relationship and, and you can read that in Hebrews that on the father's side of the of the pendulum um, Jesus went to the cross so that the father might have sons it says that and so you realize that with him it's almost like well you know it, his involvement with redemption, was eventually not to just get us into heaven so that we're, we're not going to 
be burned up by the devil, but rather to get sons in the image of Christ. Um, so, so Jesus is certain about this man, a certain man. He's certain that the relationship with him, and, and, if, you, and if you read the story in Luke 15, <clears throat> you don't really see him involved with anything except his sons. That's the whole story of this certain man, this father, is that it's to him, it is, uh, you, don't, you don't see him, um, um, you know, working the cattle or, or, you know, telling the hired hands to go uh, fix the, fence in the lower 40 or I guess they probably wouldn't use that language that's pretty much text in there but you know that sort of thing um, in fact it almost seems to a certain degree he's absent from all of the things that would make him something other than a father absent in what way he's looking afar waiting for his son absent from everything else He's still doing that. I hope you're not too far from the son being formed in you, but he's still doing that. He's waiting on his son to come forth. He's waiting to see the son. He's wa that's what's in his heart. That's what he's about. That's what he was about before the foundation of the world. That's where his interest lies. And, you know, someone says, well, you, you know, Father, you sent Jesus to go to the cross. Why didn't you go? But Jesus willingly did it to the, for the Father that he might have sons, that he might get what he desires. The Father worked the plan so that he would get a bride, Jesus would get a bride. But the interests of the Father are very certain. He is a certain man. And the sooner we learn that, the sooner we'll plug into an actual, real father and be able to relate to him by the son, not just by the savior or the healer or other, other things that are so important to us. Uh, we will, uh, and we will get the response. Luke 15, the prodigal coming back the son coming forth. We will get the response from the father, the delight of his heart, the thing that was in his heart before the foundation of the world that has nothing to do with the world, that has nothing to do with all the things that we think, you know, are important. Um, In this story, he had sons. And the issues surrounding those sons were not as, not so important to him. Those were not the important thing, but rather that ultimately that he get his son. And so um, it's, a, it's a good thing to realize that Jesus died on the cross and, you know, he's not going to die for sins anymore, that we're forgiven. All we have to do is believe that and stand with him. Um, but it's another thing altogether, you know, I mean, we can live as, we can live in assurance as Christians. Are we, but the question is, are we living in a, such a manner that not theologically, but actually, we're giving the Father what he wanted. That'd be Christ in you, by the way. That's how that, that comes about. That, that would be the Son in you. Okay, so, <clears throat> all right, so we say, <clears throat> well, 
gosh, there's so, so much on this angle. We say, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give myself um, to the work of the Lord or, or to bless the Father. But the, the very story itself really throws cold water on that concept in a major way. I mean, I wrote down he, two sons. One was a mess and seemed less caring about his father. That'd be the, the prodigal son. In case you didn't get the story by now. <laughs> and the other one appeared faithful, committed, involved, and given to the father's desires and necessities. That's the elder son. If, if, if you didn't know any better, I mean, by looking around you, could you spot which one's an elder son, which one's a prodigal, and which one it is the son? Or would you be fooled by faithful and committed? He didn't, I mean, he didn't leave. The elder son stayed there when the other son took off. And he worked the field, because that's where he's coming from doing the stuff on the farm or whatever it is. Involved and given to the father's desires and necessities. Okay, so now that's, that's a little questionable, that last part. Because a lot of times when we can't find the living God, we can't find the living God. Jesus that lives, not at the right hand of the Father, but that lives in us. Uh, we seek and we pray and we read the Bible and we read books and we do all of this stuff and we can't find that revelation. Then it is easy to... Um, to say, well, the revelation is all the, the information I have acquired over the years in church and reading and whatever. <clears throat> and to conclude that is to, um, is to give up. Someone said to me recently again, you ever, did you ever go to rehab? I said, no, that's for quitters. The elder son, I mean, the younger son gave up, just gave up, if that's us, or the elder son gave up, either one of them. One of them gave up on, I can't do this, or maybe, maybe it's not even I can't do it, although that's a big one with people. I can't do it, and so they just give up. The other one is, I give up on... Seeking it, I'm going to say I have it. Well, it's, that's, that's common too. I'm going to say I have it, but I'm only going to do this real quick and then wipe it from my memory and then believe that I'm, I've got it. Believe. And never, never really, really, really have the veil rent, and my Lord and my God, nobody knew who was back here, but now you do. But see, we say, well, Jesus is back there. Jesus, it's Jesus. Praise God, it's Jesus. And because of a lot of the teaching in this church, because I don't know a whole lot that emphasizes it, we can say the Lamb. Um, I don't know how many of us really see a slaughtered lamb with his blood on the mercy seat, which is also the throne of grace, which is also the ascended being, and we become so impacted by that that we realize that, every, you know, this is, 
we realize everything that we thought was wrong because it's not, that's not that. It may be, you know, what's written here or maybe even the scriptures here, but it's not the living word. Um, and, um, and everything that I've done has been done. Well, maybe that, maybe the elder son, you know, maybe, I mean, maybe surely he believed that everything he did was right and good and for God until the moment when somebody who didn't deserve it, which, by the way, is who, died, who Jesus died for, the ones who didn't deserve it. I mean, that's, that's a fact, Jack. And he sees that, and, you know, I mean, if I had the elder son up here and the prodigal son, you know, uh, you know, which one, you know, ultimately brings the greatest joy, the greatest, you know, rejoicing to the heart of the Father? Okay, so let's not do them. Let's do us. Let's find the one. <laughs> let's find the one in the church that we think brings the greatest joy, and we'll point to the elder son every time. Because we don't, because the elder son doesn't want to be a prodigal. And he doesn't want to fail. Okay, well, we're already a failure. I mean, who wants to get low and dirty and, and less? We're all scratching to get more. But that, that, that messed up one, not because he deserved it, again, not because he did something that triggered it in his own being, but because he was taken down so low that at least he came to himself enough to go, there's a there's a person. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, man, I am not worthy. I am not it. I am not, you know, I'm not it. Because he had nothing in himself. He had nothing in himself except, of course, if you're born again, you have the son. Okay. Well, how many of us is the son our true claim to fame? I mean, the son, just the son. It'd be, it's just enough. Well, somebody said something bad about you, or maybe you're in a bad light for a period of time or whatever. Do you still have the sun? <laughs> yes. But do you have the sun? And that's the question. But do you have? Because if you do have the sun in that way, from that rent veil, you realize he's a lamb. And you want to be with him where he's at. See, we say, I want to be with Jesus where he's at. And we always look above and go, oh, Jesus said where I go, you know, so that you might be with me where I'm at. And go, I want to be with you. He said, be with me right here. <laughs> you know? All right, guess what? It's time to quit. It is. It's time to quit. All right, we'll come back in just a moment. What? Well, good. How about this? There's one more minute. How about pray?